Hello again, everybody. I am your host, Felipe, and you're listening to the Total Basis Podcast. And with me, as always, Sean Flannery. Sean, how are you doing this morning? I am awesome. You know, Keith Hernandez just had the number retired. It was a good day in Met Slam. One on a very Buckner-esque play, too. So especially on the day of Keith Hernandez's retirement, a ball slipping between the legs, going down the third baseline this time. Uh, it was it was a fitting day ended with dub. So we like it. Was it Bill Buckner? It was not Bill Buckner. Oh, it was then, whoever was he... playing third base for the Marlins. So Joey Wendell, something like oh, that. Oh, no, not Joey Wendell. <laughs> That's Joey Wendell for you. <laughs> Poor Joey Wendell. And on the other side, it is Austin Spiro. Austin, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I uh, just came home from uh, Arizona, knocked off uh, ballpark number six, Chase Field. Nice. So, yeah, it was, was a good time. Got oh, to meet Corey Decker. Was, yeah? Yeah, it was a good time. That's good. That's good. What did you like about the Chase One Auditorium ballpark? <laughs> Auditorium? I don't know. <laughs> We, actually in chicago we do have a chase one auditorium so i think that's what happened here go ahead <laughs> uh chase field the one thing i liked about it, it was indoors there you go because <laughs> it is i'm pretty sure that's where the devil placed his asshole it is, <laughs> it is, is, is hot. It, but 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 you live in a desert aren't you aren't you used to that weather already um not like that Oh my God. Remind I, the folks you li- you live in a in the high desert. Is that what it is? Yeah, I live in the high desert in California, so it gets hot in here. It, you know, we get we get triple digits, but you know, and it got triple digits there. I think the hottest it was when we were there was it was 114. I think when we were there. Okay. But the difference between where I live and Phoenix is where I live, it cools down at night, so you get to like 70s, right, in the summer in Phoenix. It doesn't. You walk out at 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night, and it's it's 95 degrees. And it's, <laughs> yeah. So, the and the heat just, it's, it punches you in the face. But so, but it's a dry heat, Austin. It's a dry heat, I thought. Yeah, the dry heat could kiss my ass. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I'll take the 101 feels like 101 over the 94 feels like 108. Yeah, all day. I I, I will tell because that's what our temperatures were like this week. Was ninety four feels like one hundred and eight, and I was like, nope, not a fan. Yeah, no. In all in all seriousness, I mean, it being indoors was really nice, but um, I feel like Chase Field really puts a emphasis on the fan experience. So there yeah. was a they had a lot of different uh, food, um, and the work they had dancers. I guess you want to call hey. them, but they, they were just people that worked there and like the music would come on and they just like, were just like dancing and then the music would stop and they, they'd sit down. Well, um, you see, that's what you have to do when you have a team like the diamondbacks playing on the field, you got to find some way to actually entertain the people who paid to be there. Oh my yeah, God. Right? <laughs> um, the, both games, both games were actually pretty good. Uh, I was there for the last game of the giant series and the first game of the Rocky series. Um, and both games were, were really good. It came down to the last inning. Uh, the Diamondbacks ended up losing both of them, but um, they, they were both good games. So, yeah, it was a good time. Well, speaking of games, I, I just uh, went to another minor league game, although people are going to – I can already hear them say, like, well, that's not really the minor league since they're not affiliated with the Major League Baseball part, uh, you know, affiliation. Uh, fine, it's the Frontier League. It's an independent league. By the way, that's how every comment sounds like to me. <laughs> well, how come you're saying it that way, but you're not saying it this way? Like, okay, shut up. No, but no, seriously, though. Um, uh, we went to see the Schaumburg Boomers against the Windy City Thunderbolts, and I guess we, the Windy City is not really, I mean, Windy City is Chicago, but in this situation, it's uh, the Windy City Thunderbolts are, are a team located in Crestwood, Illinois which is way, 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 way on the south side of town. And I'm on the, you know, I live on the northwest side of town, you know, the good side of town. So, but uh, yeah, the defending champs, they were down to nothing and they whooped that ass eight to four last night. So that was pretty fun experience. Again, this just proves my theory that minor league baseball games are awesome. Sorry, independent, even the independent baseball leagues are awesome too. But here's the thing though, Sean and Austin, I felt, I felt out of pocket last night because Unlike the first time I went to a minor league baseball game with, with the Chicago Dogs against the Kansas City Monarchs, where I was getting all excited about Gabriel Guerrero and Matt Adams being on the same team, 
Last night, I did not recognize a single one of those players. Not oh, a single one. That that that's tragic. I looked it up, and a lot of these guys are are. This is their first time that they're playing in professional baseball. Wow. So they, there's a lot of young. Uh, well, I, yeah, I didn't get their ages, but I mean, if, if it's the first year playing professional baseball, I have to assume these guys are young as hell. So, of course, you're not gonna you're not gonna see the uh, the prospects from yesteryear no. uh, playing. But so, but I was, but it was fun, man. I, I Austin mentioned the dancers. We, I didn't see any dancers last night, but it was a lot of fun. We had a fireworks show. The kids got to run the bases. Uh, we we got lawn seats because they were the cheapest seats out there. So that means you got. I don't know if you guys saw the pictures, but we were way on the on the corner there on, in mm-hmm. in, the, in the right field. But it was pretty freaking cool because you got to see the kids just playing around and. A lot of kids were there, bro. A lot of kids. People are saying, oh, baseball's dead. It can't, it cannot cater to the young crowd. I don't know where these kids came from then. There were so many of them. And they were all they all had their baseball gloves and they're all playing catch down in the corner on the pit of the of the right field stand of the right field foul line. Um, and and the little girls were involved too. They were just tossing the ball, going up and down the hill, doing sliding, sliding uh what do you call them? Sliding drills down the hill. Like, like whoa, you're gonna and I'm I'm freaking out, like, oh my god, you're gonna you're gonna uh, tear a ligament or something. And, and you know the, the the most awesome part was um uh, I, I I it took me a while to notice, but a lot of kids were were by the home team because we were by the, the, the first baseline is where the home team bullpen is, and a lot of kids were right there on the cage just talking to the guys on the bullpen, and, and the bullpen guys were really nice to those kids and and at the end of the game, they got to sign autographs. And even during the fireworks display, when the when all the lights went out, you just saw a bunch of like little uh, cell phone, you know, flashing lights, <laughs> trying to help the players figure out where to sign and stuff. So it was a really fun. If you're if you're a kid under like 12 years old or 13 years old or something like that, that that to me is what summer is all about. I think you know, you get to see the old bowl game, get to see a fireworks show, get to hang out with your friends, and get to talk to some uh, baseball players on the field. Uh, it was really fun experience. Uh, so yeah, I, I cannot speak highly, more highly enough about the frontier league and how they do things uh, yeah, with the fan was, experience. It was super cool. Uh, and Arizona kind of had the same experience where I happened to the second game I was there. We happened to sit next to a kid who it was his first game. He had never been to a baseball game before. It was his first, uh, baseball game he had ever been to. And I, I'm assuming I, it wasn't mom. I'm assuming it's aunt or somebody like that was sitting next to him and, and something would happen and the kid be like, what's going on? And the aunt <laughs> would explain it to him and stuff. So it was, it was super cool. We were trying to get the kid a ball. It didn't, it didn't work out too well. We didn't quite get him a ball, but you know, oh, that, that was, that was one thing he, he wanted a ball. He, he was like, I want a ball. And we, my dad tried, I tried, his aunt was trying, we were all <laughs> trying and Christian Walker wouldn't throw the ball. <laughs> uh, no, they're jerks sometimes, but you know, that, I, Christian Walker. No, but no. I think the best part was whenever there was a foul ball coming our way, you just saw a swarm, a stampede of children just, yeah. just you know, getting and closing in on it and just the, fighting the for t-ball it. routine. Everybody, oh, is that what everybody, it is? everybody runs to the ball, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> dog pile right where the ball ends up, and whoever gets it gets it. But that was a lot of fun as well. As, and, and, and you know what? The kids weren't paying too much attention to the game. I mean, they were, but they weren't uh, because they were like all on the first baseline, just messing around and playing with, with uh, you know, tossing the ball around and then chasing the ball around and chasing foul balls and bothering baseball players. Uh, but like I said, there was a ton of them in there. And I don't so know. Minor, I just Minor league or, or independent league, the kids are chasing the ball. In the major league games, it's grown men that are piling all over each other trying to get looking at you, so, Zach Hample. So dumb. <laughs> Come on. And my friend asked me, like, hey, have you ever caught a foul ball or a home run ball before? I'm like, no, I mean, unfortunately, I don't go to enough games to increase my chances. But am I going to fight a bunch of 12 year olds for a ball? Hell no. That was the thing. I'm like, I don't care. Like, I played baseball. Like, I caught enough baseballs in my lifetime. I don't need to catch another one. I'm fine. Like, I'm not, if it lands in my lap, cool. And then I'm going to give it to a kid, but I'm not going to dog pile a 12 year old for a baseball. Like, yeah. come on. Yeah, exactly. You, you, guys, you guys just aren't having fun then. <laughs> <laughs> That's the funnest part of it. The, not- the other, uh, in the, in Arizona too, I had witnessed something I had never seen before live in my entire life. And Corey will probably attest to it too, because he was, he was at the game too. Um, we were sitting there. I think it was probably the fifth inning. 
fan interference. It, we saw it live. The uh, guy guy reached over, caught caught a home run, and brought it back. Right, or caught the ball over the fence and brought it back. Thought it was a home run. They went up and reviewed it. Turned out it was fan interference. And then for for those of you that have maybe never been to a baseball game before, or have never seen something like that before, if you interfere with Ejected. the ball game, they kick you out of the stadium. Yep. So they they went down and they grabbed this guy, who by the way was wearing a Diamondbacks hat. And apparently, according to Corey Decker, by sleight of hand, he ended up keeping the ball. Um, <laughs> so he, he, uh, they went down to go pick him up. And, of course, not only did they kick that guy out, they took everybody else with him, everybody that was with him. And so oh. not only did this guy go, you saw like seven or eight people go with him. I was like, oh, oh my God, that guy <laughs> is like the, the, the Bartman of <laughs> – of, of his that, family yeah, <laughs> or his whole family he just ruined the entire day of like eight people they've been <laughs> they've been waiting all day to go see this game they only saw four innings of it because this dude couldn't wait for it to get over yeah, the fence yeah that was going to be my next question was it like in the first or second inning because that's terrible but if it's like the the eighth it like, it's like whatever I, you're, you're letting me beat the crowd if you kick me out in the eighth inning like okay thanks you're doing me a favor yeah it was like fourth or fifth inning oh so it was, there was still quite a bit of the game left. I just thought, I was like, I've never seen this live. Like, I think I've only seen it like once or twice on TV and I've never seen it live. So it was funny. And we, all of us were like, kick him out. We were all, <laughs> it, was, it was quite funny. So, well, like I said, it's fun times at the old ball game. Like I said, uh, I was trying to mention that uh, the game's, game's doing okay, man. It's the, uh, they'll get more fans eventually the younger crowd watching, um, and uh, I don't know, you, you, you cannot tell me that you can, you, these kids were not wanting to go to the baseball game last night because there was a ton of them and they were all having fun. And, and uh, yeah, like, so anybody that says that the game's in bad, is in bad shape for the future. Uh, I, I mean, I, I saw it with my own eyes, guys, I'm doing the eye test and it looks like it's, <laughs> it's going to be okay. So there we go. Uh, all right. So we're here to talk about major league baseball predictions for the 2022 season. Uh, we did these way back in April, I believe. Uh, Sean wasn't there, but Austin was there. Henry uh, was there to talk about his predictions. We usually t- start with the AL East, but I wanted to, you know, do something different and work a- our way backwards. Are you guys okay to talk about individual player awards first? Go for sure. it. All right. Well, here we go. What did we have way back in April as uh, our predictions? And you can see there's a, a, a I picked Vladimir Guerrero. Austin went with Mike Trout. Sean went with Shohei Otani. Vince went with Vlad Guerrero. And Henry went very bold in Wander Franco. And right now on the Fangraphs uh, wins above replacement, uh, if we are to use that as the sole way to predict the um, MVP awards, and, and, I'm, and I'm, obviously I'm starting off with the American League awards, looks like Rafael Devers is in the lead with 4.3 among all hitters. And uh, I'm not sure where Shohei Otani would be in the sport. Uh, he's not even leading the American League and wins above replacement at the moment. Kevin Gossman is. And I don't see Kevin Gossman picked as a Cy Young candidate either. But here are the Cy Young Award uh, predictions from April. I picked Garrett Cole. Austin went with Garrett Cole. Vince went with Garrett Cole. Everybody went with Garrett Cole except for Sean, who went with Dylan Cease, who's having a decent year. He's in 11th place, though, in the uh, Fangraphs War metric. Um, oh, he, he was in 11th. Oh, I, I sorted it by AL earlier, and he was like, I think, third or fourth. But I was I was kind of interesting that Gossman was as high as he is. Uh, had a kind of a poor month of June. but uh, Yeah, he did. But uh, he's, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll see. Like, it, I, I think Dylan Cease, like, he has the highest K per nine of any qualified starter in baseball, I believe. So I, I, it's still a, a dark horse. He's probably the one I feel – the best about aside from Shohei Otani right yeah, now. He does have the highest K per nine, but he I'm pretty sure without even sorting it, that he also, among all starting pitchers, has the highest walk rate among all of them as well. So probably not the highest, but it is over four. <laughs> uh, you want to go that route? Fine. Let's go that route. Walk <laughs> per nine innings. Who among starting pitchers lead? Dylan Seas leads the entire league among qualifying pitchers. Oh, really? Nine. Yeah. Uh, it's a what? 4.1, 4.2? 4.21, yeah. Oh, that's unfortunate. Uh, he, yeah. I mean, that, I will, that's always been his issue. Go ahead. I will, I will say in terms of the batters, um, the top five in war in the AL is Denver's is Devers judge 
Jose Ramirez, Jordan Alvarez, and then Mike Trout. None of the rest of y'all picks is even in the top 30. So pretty sure. Yeah. I well, I picked the unicorn. So he's at 2.6 war pitching and on the offensive side at 1.7. So he's at 4.3. What did we say Devers was at? Uh, 4.3. Yeah, yeah we're, so. not, we're not doing that bullshit. Come on. Get <laughs> Come on! There, no, if no. he if he literally does this all year, he's MVP. He There's does no, okay. No, where does right. Otani rank among all qualifying pitchers? Right, I'm not even sorting it. You know, I'm not I'm not going to change the pitchers. But yeah, guess uh, what? He's he's, 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 he's at two point six. I, I don't know where. Well, it doesn't qualify. That's the point. He doesn't, doesn't qualify. Just, he's made fourteen like starts. Me. We did this last. We did this activity last year. He didn't qualify in the mid season point last year. He doesn't no, he qualify qualifies. again. He's ninth. No, he's not. I'm looking at it among all qualifying. Oh, I have I have minimum inning zero. Oh well, it's always easy when you do it that way. When when you drop the threshold, then Otani qualifies for everything, right? No, he didn't qualify last year, and he didn't doesn't qualify this year. He he doesn't pitches once every eight games or something like that. So enough of this. Oh, but he pitches. No, he he he's at eighty. Uh, how many innings? Eighty one. Eighty one innings so far. Eighty one. And. There's Jamison Tyone with 89 innings. He's qualified for the ERA title. There you go. Hey, I'm only – I'm just showing you – Nestor what, uh, Cortez yeah. and Tony Gonsolin only have 88 innings pitched. So, only seven more innings than – Sorry, the cutoff. That, that's the cutoff. <laughs> I'm not doing – I'm not dropping anything right now. I'm just looking at the way it is. He doesn't qualify. And the, the cutoff story. is – the cutoff for qualified. Why are we still talking about the cutoff? Oh my god! <laughs> the cutoff for qualified pitching is one inning pitch per team game played. So they they they've all probably played around eighty something games. So he's 86. probably just below eighty six. So yeah, he's just below qualifying. There you go. But show you Tony letting people down again. But yeah, <laughs> let, let's let's reward a mediocrity over there for not being lack of durability, lack of stamina. We need a seven-man rotation in Los Angeles Angels. And then the Angels fans wonder why their team sucks so much ass. All right, there you go. Oh, it's I the, know why we suck. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody else. Everybody else, I mean. I, think I know I why suck. we Austin's like, I know why we suck. <laughs> well, I know I just why saw, we suck. I've watched it all year. I know why we suck. You poor soul. But uh, I just saw Vince uh, uh, post something about that uh, this morning. about, And then you wonder, Angel fans, why your team sucks so much, despite having the two best players on the team. Like yeah, everything else is just garbage. But did it's you, a team uh, sport, did you right? See my comment. What was it again? I I, uh, I told Corey in Air in Arizona, and I'll and I'll say it here. I feel I'm starting to feel like the difference between the Orioles and the or the Orioles or the Pirates or somebody like it was the that Orioles. Thing. Yeah, it was the Orioles and the Angels is Shohei Otani and Mike Trout. Yeah. Like if you didn't have Otani and Trout on the Angels, they would be the Orioles. Yeah, because the Orioles suck balls, man. I don't know how the oh, I don't know. They're, the they're Orioles two, they're have two a games under. Than the Angels. Have yeah. okay, twenty six and on base percentage, twenty third and uh, uh, starting pitching ERA, and twenty sixth and and bullpen strikeout per nine. It's all their smoke bullpen. No, no, their bullpen is legit right now. Come I on. just saw that, it's twenty six K per nine. Okay, right. that, that they're doing it the old fashioned way. Yeah, the, the smoke and mirrors. Thank you. You smoke just proved my mirrors. point. Smoke and fucking mirrors with that team. <laughs> like they, they have oh. power hitters who keep, they have players in power hitting positions who can't hit for power. None of their guys can get on base, yet they're freaking winning games. It's the, the, the most mind boggling things. Oh, the rebuild's working. No, these are guys who have been on this team for five years and they still are mediocre. It's all smoke and mirrors. I, I mean, it's a nice little fun team to watch. It really is. I mean, they uh, remind me of the Royals, like the 2014 yeah, Royals. Yeah. The, the, that, that's what the, because the, the bullpen's elite. They're young guys. They're running I'm a bunch. Gonna, I'm not going to go that far. At least, oh. no. The, you talk about the Royals being dominant in 2015, 2014, maybe. I just saw it. The, the Orioles are just, they're not that good. On their bullpen, they're, it's 26 in K per nine. That is not a dominant bullpen, man. Yeah, I'm the just ERA is Tyler side. Wells right now because he's giving me fantasy points. There you oh, go. Man. Yeah, that's I mean, that's awesome, man. That's great. <laughs> we all know. I was told that fantasy always relates well to real baseball, right? Yeah, I just I I don't care how the Orioles are doing. I just I I like Tyler Wells right now because he got me fantasy points. So. There you go. <laughs> yeah, like I said, they, they always there's a there's a correlation there all the time. But yeah, we'll we'll get to the Orioles in just a bit. But um, what else we got? Oh. We have Rookie of the Year, right? So uh, nobody picked a pitcher. Four people picked Bobby Witt Jr., except for Sean, who went with Spencer Torkelson. Yeah. and We don't Spencer, want to talk about it. No, we're going to talk about it. Spencer Torkelson is not even on the top 30. His name's not Bruno. We're talking about him. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Bobby Witt Jr. Uh, is in fourth among all rookies, that, regardless of league. But in the, I guess in the American League, he would be third uh, in war at the moment, according to fan grabs. Julio Rodriguez is the one who's leading the league in yeah. uh, rookie war. And Jeremy Pena is in second. Uh, and then manager of the year, everybody. Okay, two people went with Charlie Montoyo. Sean went very bold with Adrian Hinch. And then Dong City guys went with Scott Service. Uh, wow, I, I don't know if I like any of these. Um, for I think at this point, is it going to be Hyde in Baltimore? No, hell no. What? They're two no. games under 500. We're being in dead, in dead last. We, yeah. We, okay. We yeah. have we have yeah. seen manager of the years go to last place teams before yep. or fourth place teams. Who? 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 I don't and, remember. And that. Mattingly, I think, what a manager of the year in Miami when they were in last place. Yeah, and look how stupid that looks right now. Huh? <laughs> yeah, that they're going through their like six fucking six fucking rebuild already. <laughs> so no, I was gonna I'm gonna go. Do I dare say it? Do I dare say it? Does the manager of the year this year go to Aaron Boone? Oh, could be, could be. How happy would Yankee fans be, huh? I want it to happen just to see Vince's head explode. (laughs) Like just just to see go boom. Like it will just show that Vince was wrong and the Yankees were right to hire Aaron Boone. Aaron Boone is not a Boone head anymore because his team is winning sixty-one games, and I think that leads. Yep, that leads the entire American League, and. It would prove that it, the Yankees knew what they were doing in hiring a managerial genius in Aaron Boone, right? That's how it works, right? That's how it works. You get a bunch of writers who nobody respects, but you respect the awards that they hand out to guys like Aaron Boone. Is that what we're doing now? <laughs> and Dom Mattingly, apparently, for uh, about- <laughs> mediocrity now. What? What about, what about Baldelli? Yeah. Nobody cares about the Twins, man. <laughs> <laughs> Felipe, I really like. What, what was the last week you guys did a show two weeks ago when I was in uh, Pennsylvania? I think. So, what has happened in the last two weeks? Because you are just spit spitting right now. You are spitting, spitting fire, spitting, not, truth, not, spitting not, not 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 spitting fire or facts. Just you seem a little on edge. I'm just tired of it, man. I'm tired of it. Like, <laughs> the, the Orioles are, are a good team. All of a sudden, like okay. Nobody gave a shit about any of these players for the last two or three years. Well, oh, they're rebuilding. The house, Austin, not a... Austin, Austin, I know what it is. I know why Felipe is so upset about Baltimore. Why? They have a better record than both the Cubs and the White Sox. No, that doesn't matter. <laughs> that doesn't no the, the thing about the Orioles is they got a it's bunch It's not of... funny, guys. It's not funny. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, those are, I mean, that is also, those are truths, but I mean, you know, I've been kind of saying that the White Sox have been a major disappointment all season long, despite the fact yeah. that White Sox fans want to crucify me for not being a White Sox homer like they are. And then the Cubs, I, I keep telling Cubs fans, stop watching this team like any of this matters. None <laughs> of this season matters. It's, you, know what the, you know what this is, Sean? This is, the Orioles are just a poor man's version of the Cubs but with, with better success, with more luck involved, I guess. Like, it has to be. It's the only explanation because none of this matters. Were the Orioles... You're telling me that this is a foundation of a roster that's going to do great things in the future? All those yeah, guys are, are, are closer to 30 than they are to 25. All those guys are in the Baltimore. All right? You cannot tell me that the rebuild is working. You cannot tell me that this is going to be a foundation for the Orioles to be successful in the future. When the youngest guy is 24 years old, Natalie Rushman, everybody else is closer to 30 than they are to 25. The starting pitching is full of mediocre players. And, and the bullpen, it, I just told you, they're not as dominant as people think they are. It's good, but it's not dominant. It's not Kansas City Royals dominant. They're 26 and strike out per nine innings. Come on, you guys. It's time to... And then you we're guys, guys. I didn't say anything about the <laughs> what do you mean, you people? What do you mean, you people? <laughs> and then and then we we're applauding a guy who can't even get who can't even pitch as many innings as, as his team is playing. Oh, but he should be Cy Young because he's 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 only pitching like every once every nine days at this point. And now the I did, Angels I need like nine starting Shoy pitchers. Otani. I don't think he should win MVP. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, well, Sean, it's just right there. Sean believes it, but not just Sean. Everybody wants it to be done. Like why? Why it can't? No. We shouldn't be fine. It was cute the first time around. It the angels still blow ass. We need to stop doing that. We need to stop doing that. We should be better as fans. I'm just saying. But uh, anyway, <laughs> so I'm yeah, thinking, Yankee. I'm thinking another dark. I don't know if he's a dark horse or not. Another finalist could be Dusty Baker. Hmm. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, I, I can get behind. Well, didn't he win it like last year, two years ago? I don't remember. I, don't know. I think he won it last. He's won it recently with yeah. the Astros. Astros, yeah. I think I think it was his first year there. 
He could win it again, especially if the Astros have the best record in the league. They'll give it to Dustin well, Baker. Yeah. Since we're rewarding uh, mediocrity, give it to Tony La Russa. I mean, is he, <laughs> yeah, White Sox fans. Tony. Well, they've been injured all year, so it's not fair to judge Tony La Russa on that. Well, they were injured last year too, and he was able to uh, take advantage of a of a really crappy division. Still, but I told you guys the division this year for the AL Central was going to get better this year. Like, no, they still suck. We should, we, we should. The division's going to be a cakewalk. I'm ready to face the Yankees right now. Nah, you're not ready to face anything. You're not ready to face ass at this point. That's like my word of the day, ass, donkey, <laughs> boobs, a bunch of boobs over there. In the you AL are just, like I said, you are so revved up right now. <laughs> and so you think, are wound so tight. I'm just tired of it, man. I'm tired of it. All the things that people are celebrating are things that should not be celebrated. I'm just Let saying. it go. Like, well, you go. guys mentioned the Cubs. There's literally Cub fans thinking, oh, man, I can't wait to see this guy in the future. This guy's thirty is going to be 34 <laughs> years old next year. What the fuck are you talking about in the future? <laughs> there is no future. With the Cubs? There is no future. It's a, it's a poorly run team now. I don't anyway. <laughs> this is entertaining, Austin. It's so, so dumb. Like, I, I feel like we should just let him go. Just let Why him go. Why are you guys not as angry as I am about this nonsense? <laughs> Fucking cup fans <laughs> celebrating and talking about the Cubs. Oh man, this team's gonna be fun. Who, who's gonna be fun? They're all can't years wait old. to see Frank Schwindel be captain of the team in four oh years when God. they win the World Series. <laughs> you got to trade him. I said, well, who can you get at this point? What an A player? Yes, a single think, A player. I think we should have a new segment on this show, and it should be make Felipe mad. I mean, it's not hard. You, you can look at it right now. I'm looking yeah. at the roster. And all we have to do is say Orioles and then just let <laughs> just let him go. I'm telling you, you guys talk about the difference between the Angels and the Orioles. The difference between the Cubs and the Orioles is that the Cubs actually have a guy under 24 years old and Christopher Morrell on the team right now. All right? Th- that's the difference. Everybody else is what is is, is also closer hey, to 30. Hey, just like th- the 30, Orioles. 30, sh- 30 is just a number. 30 is just a number. Yeah, thirty is just the number as the as as the yeah. Uh, tell that to Albert Pujols. He he takes <laughs> the number every t- every year. Yeah, the thirty is just the number as the service time uh, uh, <laughs> limits are, are expiring soon. In some of these guys, right? Nico Horner's twenty five years old and still looks like he's just there to slap the ball around the infield. Uh, it's just uh. oh, and Anderson Simmons is back. So just what we need, we need a clone of Nick Madrigal and Nico Horner on the but uh, thirty three years old. Oh man, Anderson Simmons is going to be the future shortstop of this team. Like get the. He's not even playing shortstop for him, is he? No, he's playing second. Second, yeah. Point, yeah. Because <laughs> Nico Horner, Horner Nico, Nico Horner's Horner is the future. If Nico Horner is the future of this team, Nico Horner's going to be around when this team's going to get good again. Like when? Five, seven years from now at this rate? Anyway. Nico Horner, MVP. Yeah, Brennan Davis has back problems. He can't stay healthy. Pete Coral Armstrong's in high A. We still don't know what he could be. And he's, he's hurt so again. Of, of course. So, yeah, that, hey, I guess the Mets won the Javier Baez deal, right? You mean the Trevor Williams trade? Oh God! That, that that that's the Trevor Williams trade. Well, can we do something really quick? You know who? I just realized. Uh, I think because now it's a. I think I did this already in, in the fan tracks league for our fantasy league, and we're not talking fantasy today. But I just realized that Sean basically in our trade for Luis Robert just basically handed me Luis Robert on a silver platter, and that was it. I got Luis Robert for free from Sean. You're that welcome. Was the, that was the only player that was involved because now officially, I think I, I think you, I you, dro- you dropped Austin Martin. Yeah. Okay. So I did do it. I, I couldn't remember yeah. if it was this league or the other league, but Austin Martin has been dropped. That means that the, that the four player trade that Sean and I were involved. Who was the only, fourth piece? Who's the fourth piece? Uh, Nick Senzel. So the, oh, okay, Senzel, so the original was. trade was Sean wanted Jared Klenick and Nick Senzel for me. And he was willing to give Luis Robert and Austin Martin in return. And the only player that's still on the team is Luis Robert. So that is what we call Sean just giving away a good center fielder. And you know what I got out of it? Nothing. A championship. No, well, in, in terms of this deal, you got nothing. <laughs> I, I, I won the championship that year, no? Oh, get out of here. Just, just take the L on this one. Take it. Just take the L. Giving away giving away to, uh, uh, elite players like that, you know. Well, I know you don't like Luis Robert, but still. Yeah. Okay, moving on to the next. Uh, so, uh, do we agree that uh, Aaron Boonehead is going to get the AL MB, uh, AL's uh, Manager of the Year award? I think right now it'll be yes, but it depends on how the Astros do. If the Astros end up with a better record, Dusty Baker wins. Yeah, I, I'm I'm up the middle on it. It, it depends. I, I I still like my AJ Hinch pick. 
if the Tigers could have like a good second half. Well, I mean, they had a good second <laughs> half. No, seriously, they had a good second half last year. I mean, they were what, like eight games over 500 in the second half. And and Riley Green's going to be a different of Let's right. make Felipe mad. Yeah, uh, th- this is, we're just doing it again. But, you know, well, that doesn't make me mad. That just makes me laugh right now. Like, they're, they're, gonna, they're, they're 12 games under 500. Yeah. If, if, the Tiger, if the Tigers end the year <laughs> around 500. Ah! <laughs> yes. Yes. He's so upset. Yes. Get... <laughs> have you had coffee this morning? I think that's the problem. I have to, uh, too much coffee already. I'm like, oh. <laughs> using my Tigger mug to make me happy right here. Uh, boing, boing, boing. <laughs> the most wonderful thing about being a Tigger is I'm the only one. <laughs> oh, anyway, uh, and then just to recap, <laughs> just really quick. So we, we talked about Devers, Judge, uh, Jose Ramirez, Jordan Alvarez. Okay, we did do that. And then Cy Young, uh, we got Kevin Gossman. We got uh, Shane McClanahan. Uh, yeah, that, I feel like that's going to be the, the pick right there. It better be. I'm thinking it better so too. Be. Dylan Cease, of course, Shane Bieber, Justin Verlander, and Martin Perez as a dark horse. Oh, God. Yeah. Again, we're just celebrating mediocrity this year, right? He, just- he's just going to get traded. It's, he's Kyle Gibson from last year. He's going to get <laughs> traded to the Phillies, go yeah. into that ballpark, and get his tits lit. But who do I the mean, Phillies have at this point? Who do the Phillies have to trade? That's the problem. I mean, what did they – they traded, what, Spencer Howard for Kyle Gibson? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Bryson Bryson Stott for uh, Martin Perez. Over to oh. the national over to the National League, we got everybody picked uh, Juan Soto for MVP except for Vince who picked Mookie Betts. So what is the Fangraph worst thing? Manny Machado's in the lead. Paul yep. Goldschmidt is up there. Nolan Arenado. So that means they those two Cardinal players cancel each other out. Dansby <laughs> Swanson uh, is playing for a contract, doing fourteen home runs and fourteen stolen bases. He's up on the top of the leaderboard. There's Mookie Betts. Uh, who's uh, having a, a bounce back year this year. So good for him. Tommy Edmond, in terms of uh, Frank Rose war, he's up there. Trey Turner, Freddie Freeman. And uh, so anyway, who it looks like is in the driver's seat for this MVP award. Is it really Manny Machado or is it somebody else? I feel like Paul Goldschmidt until somebody takes it away from him. Yeah, I'm no one ever know. He's going to take it away from him. Man, but how? He has no one ever know. Don't we penalize players for having good teammates? Isn't that how it works? Huh? And I, I, I don't know. I, I think it's Paul Goldschmidt, and I think that's it. He, I mean, he's, he's so much better than everybody else right now. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's hitting the cover off the baseball right now. And uh, I think the other thing is Goldschmidt has not been hurt. Machado just did get hurt, and I think that's, the, that's a big separation. Apart from the weighted runs created plus, uh, um, Paul Goldschmidt is at 191, and Manny Machado is at 157. Um, despite Manny Machado having 0.1 war better. Um, I, I think uh, the bat, the Babbitt is way better for uh, Paul Goldschmidt. The slash line for Goldschmidt is way better than Machado. Um, I, th- I think this is Goldschmidt's to lose. I mean, right now it's like looking at it, it's like, yeah, Goldschmidt could regress because it's a crazy eye Babbitt. But when you look at the way runs created like leaderboards for this year, it looks like it has in the AL – for the last like seven years where it's like trout at 190, 200, whatever. And then everybody else is like 30 points below Goldschmidt's at 191. The next closest is Bryce Harper at 167. He's out, you know, for the next two months. And then the next closest after that is Machado at 157. So almost, you know, a 34, 35 point gap there. Um, And he plays, you know, a solid first base. I guess that's the only knock on him compared to Machado or Arenado or, Mookie Betts is that he's only playing first base. And even then we talked about this last year with Vladimir Guerrero, right? Even, uh, you know, in war and yeah. all of, and some of these other stats that be playing first base, you, you're highly penalized. Yeah. So the fact that he's up here in the top two in the league, even though he plays first base, I mean, the, the, the next closest first baseman is down in eighth, which is Freddie Freeman. Yeah. So I, I, I think because, you're seeing this high of production from a position that's usually highly penalized. I think, again, it goes to show that this is Goldschmidt's MVP to lose. Yeah. That's well, that's dumb logic. And that's how the voters are going to vote because the writers are stupid as fuck. But here okay, we go. So, we, so hold on. Should, hold on. Now, no, no, you guys so who should win it. You guys talked over it. Here's my thing. Gold, <laughs> there's one, two, three St. Louis Cardinals on the top of this leaderboard, okay? Manny Machado's by himself, and I'm looking at the lineup right now for the, for the San Diego Padres, right? It's bad. 
It's bad. It's Manny Machado and everybody else. And we don't know when Fernando Tatis is coming back. So you can't even use that as an excuse that we're going to penalize. It's awful. It's Trent Grisham, Jake Cronin Growth. They're all having down years. Nomar Mazzara. Remember Nomar Mazzara? We used to talk about him. He looks the part, but he doesn't do the part. Luke Voigt. And he's still, he's only 27 years old. No more Mazzara. Oh, so he, he fit in right well with the Orioles right now. I knew exactly. God damn it. I knew you were going to say it. <laughs> too. Just, just set me up and I throw him down. That's what it is. Luke Voigt has 10 home runs. And actually, it does those two guys, Manny Machado and Luke Voigt, those are the only players on that team who have 10 plus home runs. Um, but yeah, uh, Austin Ola, Eric Hosmer, Hassan Kim, Jose Asokar. Who the hell is Jose Asokar? <laughs> And the, I mean, Austin, we, we, we looked at every single, uh, almost every single player of importance this offseason. Did you run into some guy named Jose Azucar for the same San Diego Padres? I, I don't remember the name, although right. we looked at 600, 700 names. So he could be in there. No, I died. I don't remember. I would, I would remember him. No way. So, yeah, MVP, most valuable player. I mean, the, where would the Padres be without uh, Manny Machado at this point? I mean, we're going to see it soon because you just said he's injured. And I think he's a big difference maker. That's the difference maker between the Padres being a third, um, a, a disappointing third place team last year to second place, seven games back behind the Dodgers and what, five and a half in front of the Giants at the moment. So, yeah, I think we need to be putting some more respect on Manny Machado's name and realize that Paul Goldschmidt plays on a really, really, really good offensive juggernaut in St. Louis. And uh, yeah, because we've, we've penalized players for being on good teams before. So let's penalize this guy too. <laughs> anyway, uh, moving on, Walker, Texas Bueller, and the Cy Young Award. Wow, that's a big disappointment. <laughs> yeah, that did not end well. <laughs> uh, we got two guys, uh, Sean and Vince picked Jacob DeGrom. Henry went with Max Scherzer, and that's not looking too good right now for those guys. And Corbin Burns went with uh, Austin, is going with Corbin Burns back in April. So what does that look like at the moment? And I can't look at it because my computer froze. So some, Car- uh, Carlos, Rod- Carlos Rodon is leading the National League in Fangraphs war slightly ahead of Sandy Alcantara, who is slightly ahead of Max Freed, who is slightly ahead of Zach Wheeler with Aaron Nola rounding out the top five. Corbin All Burns are- is six. What was that? Yeah, Corbin Burns is at six. Um, that top five are all at three war or greater. Um, and then it drops down to Corbin Burns and a group of Corbin Burns, Joe Musgrove, Logan Webb, you Darvish, Kyle Wright. Um, so there's that. And then Tyler Maley, uh, an 11th in wow. Fangraphs War, even with a four and a half ERA, uh, has a 3.18 expected ERA and 3.53 FIP. So a little unlucky trade candidate, possibly. Uh, can you guys still hear me or no? Yes, yes, yep. we hear you. Yep. All right. Well, my I can't get to any of the rest of the screen here. I still got the National League awards, but I cannot get to the uh, Fangraph stuff or um, any of my predictions on the spreadsheet. So we're just gonna move on then. Okay. Oh wait, uh, wait, you who you, talk, you talk about the National League? Uh, okay, we talk about the Cy Young. Uh, let's quickly move on to Rookie of the Year: Cesar Suzuki, O'Neill Cruz, Max Meyer. Uh, Vince also went with uh, Cesar Suzuki. Henry. He insists that he went with O'Neill Cruz, but the spreadsheet says Joey Bart. So, <laughs> uh, who who has the leaderboard there uh, for the rookies? Anybody uh, for rookies right here? I'll, I'll pull it up to the the hitting side. Yeah. On the hitting side, uh, right now <laughs> leading in WAR by pretty wide margin is Michael Harris of the Braves, That's... and then you have Brendan Donovan second, Luis Gonzalez of the Giants third, Christopher Morel fourth, and then Alec Thomas fifth mm. um so michael harris is a 1.9 war brendan donovan is a 1.2 war gonzalez and morell both have 1.1 1. 1, and then alec thomas 1.0 was the pit anybody have the pitching uh, yeah it would be spencer strider and mckenzie gore and i guess joe ryan didn't pitch enough last year so he is still rookie of the year eligible but it's spencer striders ahead by a pretty healthy margin right now got a at 2.3 we got a couple of guys who uh graduated from the total basis podcast prospect reviews there huh michael harris and uh joe ryan yep yeah so pat yourselves on the back for that one actually pat myself on the back those are guys, those are two of my guys right there <laughs> So there you go. All right. Uh, and then we finished with manager of the year. Everybody picked Buck Showalter. I wanted to be different and went with Bob Melvin. And it looks like it is going to be Buck Showalter's uh, to lose at yeah. this point. Uh, he, the Mets got off to, I mean, we talked, uh, what's his name? Uh, James Hannibal and I, we talked about it the last time we were together uh, for this podcast. 
And uh, we talked about the Braves and the resurgence that they've had over the last month or so. Uh, I mean, uh, Sean, you're a big Mets fan. If the Braves overtake the division this year and Buck Showalter's team barely makes the playoffs, is Buck Showalter still the manager of the year at that point? Well, I mean, even if the Braves overtake them in the division, I think the Mets are a shoe in for the playoffs simply because of the expanded wild card. I mean, they have the second best record in the National League. They've held had held the best record in the National League. They're 21 games over 500. Um, so I, I don't think they're in any danger of, you know, not making the playoffs, even if they don't win the division. What um, if, what if, you just mentioned it, what if, the Rangers trade Martin Perez to the Phillies. Then you guys are in big trouble. What happens? No, then? They, they, they said the same. They said the same thing about Kyle Gibson last year, and I told yeah. everyone this is not going to end well. And guess what? Kyle Gibson had a five ERA the rest of the year. But no, I, I, I think it's harder to give Buck Showalter manager of the year if they don't win the division. Uh, in that case, I could see manager, uh, not manager or whatever the hell you just said. Yeah, yeah, whatever. It's a word. Um, <laughs> I, I could see uh, what's his name, Oliver Marmol. Uh, the, if the Cardinals somehow overtake, you know, they're two, three games out behind the Brewers right now. Uh, but if the Cardinals win the division, I could see uh, him winning manager of the year as well. All right, gentlemen, we, someone's going to have to take charge here. I cannot do anything. I mean, that's just the fact that you guys can hear me. I, I'm even thinking of just maybe shutting uh, my computer down and see if I can restart while you guys keep talking about the National League West. That's something you guys want to do. Uh, uh, yeah, I could, I could take over. So, uh, right. let's go so to, I'm going to get out then. I'm going to see what I can do to uh, make this work again. Cause none of this is working. So I okay. will talk to you guys in a little bit. Thanks. Yep. Yep. So, uh, let's go over. So we did all the awards, so let's move into the actual divisions. Uh, so we're going to start, do you want to start with the AL or the NL dealer's choice? You go for it. All right. Let's go with the AL because my team is in the AL. So let's, <laughs> let's talk about the AL and get that out of the way. So let's talk about the American league East first. Uh, all of us, in, except for Vince, had the Blue Jays leading the division. Vince had the Rays winning the division. Um, and then it looks like three of us had the Rays in second. Vince had Blue Jays in, in second. And Henry had the Yankees in second. Whereas the rest of us had the Yankees in third. Um, Vince also has is the only one that said that four out of the five AL East teams are going to make the playoffs, um, and the and it and the AL East in real life is stacking up this way. You've got the Yankees in first with the best record in the AL, then the Red Sox in second, fifteen games behind. The Rays are just behind them at forty five and thirty nine, and then you have the Blue Jays in fourth, disappointing at forty five and forty one, and then the Orioles. Um, at 42 and 44. And if I remember correctly, as of right now, the AL East ha does have four playoff teams. Yeah, if, if the season were to end today, the Blue Jays and their disappointing disappointing 45 and 41 would be in the playoffs. Yeah, so I, mean, I, I think it's very interesting that we had all picked the Blue Jays aside from Vince, who had the Rays. And it's like, you look at them and they're not bad. It's yeah. just they're not having the year we thought they could. Yeah. Um, I mean, Alejandro Kirk is leading their team in war, which is fun. I, that, that's actually really fun. And he's now an all star and all props to him. But the, the pitching has been a little weird for uh, Toronto. You know, Jose Barrios was the big, you know, guy they brought in last year, gave him that big contract extension. And he has been worth zero war. I mean, he's just Jose Barrios is Jose Barrios. He's a five and a half ERA. Um, Pitching being led by Gossman, Manoa, Stripling. Do they have a good second half in them, Austin? Do you think that they could maybe overtake uh, Boston and maybe get the, the higher wild card? I think maybe the hitting core will turn it on because, I mean, they got too good of a hitting core to – to continue a the, as disappointing of an offense as they are um, right now in terms of war in their offense, they are, I mean, they're third in terms of war so far this season um, behind Houston and the Yankees. But I think, you know, we haven't quite seen uh, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. do the MVP things that we saw him do last year. I'm not saying he needs to get back to that, but, you know, he needs to get a little better than what he's doing. Um, you need to see Bo Bichette turn on a little. I, I think I think that's the big key to him right now is if Bo Bichette goes into Bo Bichette mode, 
Uh, Cause like, even now, like we can say Vladimir Guerrero is having a disappointing year, uh, 269, 350, 489. That's a 133 WRC plus. It's like, we, I, I can't say he's been bad because a right. one third, that, that's a great, you know, that, that's a good, great slash line. It's just not what he did before, but Bo Bichette's the one hugely underperforming below league average hitter in 2022. So far, I think he's the key to their second half. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you have to have somebody from that young core step up. And obviously you got to have another starting pitcher step up. Um, even though he's had a disappointing junior of Kevin Gossman, who has done fairly well for the team. Yeah. Um, I mean, and then you have uh, Jose Barrios, who's just fallen on his face, which I kind of saw coming. I mean, he wasn't an ace in my opinion. I, I, I yeah, I, I'm, I've been on the anti Barrios train for a while. And I thought the American yeah. league East was a terrible spot for him. I yeah. thought it was a good contract because they didn't really pay like that crazy ace money to him. It was just more of like a, a you know, seven years. They gave him more years instead of more money. Um, but yeah, the American league East, I thought was going to kind of eat him alive. Yeah, and I mean, we, we see that when it comes to any of these new pitchers. I think the only one that has kind of come out unscathed in the AL, not unscathed, but, you know, has come out the best in the AL East and is and is new to the AL East is Kevin Gosman. Um, yeah. The rest the rest of them you're seeing, they, they are not doing, you know, I think the only other one that comes to mind right now is Barrios is not doing very well right now. But, you know, it's just th- this place is a murderer's row for pitchers yeah. because the offenses are so good. Not only that, you're in the division of the team that has not only the best offense, but the best pitching staff in the in the AL right now. The Yankees, they're the number one offense in terms of uh, war, and they're the number one uh, pitching staff in terms of war. So when you have a team like that that right now just looks like they're untouchable, it's, it's difficult to yeah. get anything going because you have to play – what five, six, seven series of the, of these guys. And it's so hard to get momentum going once, when you play a team like that over and over and over again. Yeah. It's really, I, I Ross Stripling's probably been like Toronto's savior uh, yeah. as he's, you know, three low threes ERA. He's third on the team in war, but then you look at the rest of the rotation, uh, Jose Brios, who we just talked about, he, he, yeah, he Jin Ryu out for the year. Uh, and then also brought in during the offseason, you say Kikuchi. I say Kikuchi. Yeah, ERA over five. And just like that, Felipe is back. Uh, Toronto, I think, could really turn it around if they are a team that go out like they did last year and acquire, you know, the best starting pitcher on the market. Uh, not Martin Perez, because I think that would be even <laughs> worse than going to the Phillies. But maybe if the Blue Jays go out and get Tyler Maley. Huh. Or, uh, but you also have to remember they have to be kind of judicious about who they target in a trade because uh, there are going to be some players that are just inherently unavailable to them due to, you know, the COVID stuff. So yeah. who I don't know the vaccination status of every player in the league, but I, what if they try and get a starter, but the starter's not vaccinated, like they just can't make the trade. Then it's like, well, shit. So, but hey, I, Kyle I, I Hendricks, man. Yeah. Kyle Hendricks. He's on the IL. <laughs> oh, so he just, you have to give up one prospect then. That's it. He's on the just IL. One, just one single A guy. <laughs> Double A maybe. I don't know. So, so Sean, where do you, where do you see this? Uh, what is your prediction for the ALEs going into the second half of the season? What do you see happening here? Uh, uh, Orioles I think in I, first. I, I think. <laughs> and just like that, he's still cranky. Uh, I, I, I think the Blue Jays can overtake the Red Sox. And then I, I think it will stay like this. And all four teams will be um, in the playoffs. I, I think that division's just too good compared and the to the Orioles rest of too? the American League. And yeah. the Orioles too? No, not That's the a... Orioles. Oh, oh. Granted, no, if, the, the... Or, if the Orioles were in the Central, they probably could do it. Oh, well, where, no. where do you think the Rays fit in all this? Do you think they're second? Do you think they're I, I think they just I think they just like sneak in. Um, I, I could see them. Like them and the Red Sox are going to be neck and neck. I, I think they'll, but then when the Rays make the playoffs, I'd be worried because they could just be the team that kind of just backs in to the playoffs. And then in a playoff series, you get hit with, you know, McClanahan. They're probably going to go out and get another pitcher because it's Tampa and that's just what they do. Yeah. Um, 
So, yeah, I, I'd be worried about the Rays, even especially if they're quiet going into the postseason, just kind of not doing great, not favorites, because they could really sneak up on a team. The Rays are st- uh, the Rays are stacked pitching wise as it is right now, unlike the Orioles, who are just not good. But uh, <laughs> oh my God. but uh, <laughs> so the Rays, the Rays in terms of offense right now in the AL are right in the middle. They're seventh They're in terms of war. They are the seventh best team in terms of war. And then the Rays are fourth. They're the fourth best pitching uh, pitching staff in terms of team war. Um, so as, as Felipe was saying, it looks like they're leaning more towards as we, as we probably would have expected, they're leaning to more towards pitching. Um, the Rays, the Rays have been really good at producing pitching for the last, you know, five or six years and yeah. not, not as good of an offense, but they let their, they let their pitching, they rest on their laurels with pitching and then they score a few runs. Um, and because their pitching is so shut down, that's how they've been able to win, especially in the playoffs. Yeah. I, I think they just need one more starter. Um, because I'm, if I were the, the Rays, I would not feel confident in a 36 year old Corey Kluber starting Game Three of a playoff roster. I mean, granted, like if you used him as like a behind an opener, maybe. But even then, like I like McClanahan, I like Baz, I like Rest Muslim. Um, but uh, I, I feel like they just need one more guy. No, one, a, one more, one more guy, one more guy, right? Yeah, Dean Kramer from the Orioles. Oh my god. Yeah, because he's good now. He's good. He's uh, Orioles pitching is awesome this year. Apparently, uh, <laughs> they're so awesome. They should just trade everybody to the Rays and see if they can make them better. Uh, <laughs> Bruce Zimmerman is now in long relief. Did you guys know that, Bruce Zimmerman? <laughs> you really hate the Orioles. It's not that I, don't, I, I just don't like that. All of a sudden, oh, the rebuild has worked. The, really, Jordan Lyles is thirty-two years old. Come on, what rebuild? Hey, DL Hall and Grayson Rodriguez are around the corner. Rodriguez is hurt. They just celebrated. Oh, no. him. They they just said he had a great MRI. Yeah. I hope you feel bad. <laughs> Baltimore does is they just celebrate a little stupid wins like that. Austin Voth. Austin Voth. Is that the guy you want? Guys yeah. Want? That, that, that's the old Washington prospect. Yeah. 30 years old now. You're right. The, Dean Kramer, who can't even strike out a guy per night, per inning. <laughs> Spencer Watkins, 29 years old. The rebuild's working, you guys. Anyway. <laughs> Anyway, uh, right, can I, we move on to the American League Central? Yeah, so let's, can, move, let's move. Let's move. Guys, think I'm. You guys think I'm mad now? Wait until we talk about the fucking White Sox. <laughs> you mean the team that has a worse record than the Orioles? Yeah, that team. Uh, <laughs> what, what's, it, what's wrong with the White Sox? Fully everything. It's Please tell us what's wrong with the White Sox. Things that I talked about in the off season, the White Sox fans were telling me to just stick to being a Cubs fan and not root for the White Sox. But it, everything is coming to fruition. Everything, the lack of death. Well, they're injured. Well, that's just because they have now the lack of death is showing. It's been they've been getting away with it for the last two or three years, and they couldn't get away with it this year. And you know what? I will give them credit for showing up that bullpen this offseason. And it's the bullpen that's been letting them down. What Joe Kelly did something really bad really uh, recently, this uh, uh, in recent memory right now, and I cannot exactly picture what it was but it did not look good i heard about it but didn't see it i don't know what happened uh, I, uh, he might have made that fish that face that people love about him so, <laughs> the, the crea face yeah is that what it is I yeah know. it's not working i mean white Sox are middle of the road and i'm sorry what was that go ahead oh i i said just uh, i'm looking at the white Sox and danny mendix a great player he, he's doing awesome scrub and where's a known leadoff hitter lurry garcia he, isn't I, he, he's great, well, right? White Sox fans love Lurie Garcia, apparently. And I kept telling people, hey, you're depending on Lurie Garcia. Negative, negative one war. And he's, in 222 plate appearances. No and he, one, he's like literally been leading off a bunch. No one listened to me. I said that if you're counting on Lurie Garcia to play a lot of games for you this year, this team is screwed. Well, they worked last year. That was last year it, on a, in a worse division than this year. Yes. The AL Central was way worse last year than this year. This year, they got a little bit better. Hell, it got so good that Sean picked the Detroit Tigers to have their manager of the year from there, uh, and that didn't work. <laughs> hey, the, I just want to talk about all these players for the White Sox that are negative in war, that are, like, supposed to be critical pieces for them. Larry Garcia, well, not Larry Garcia, but Yasmani Grandal, Yoan Makata, AJ Pollock, and Eloy Jimenez are all negative yeah, values right now. Now those guys, a lot of those guys are finally back. Well, not Yasmin Grandal. Yeah, that's that. They're in big trouble if Grandal can't stay healthy for more than a month at this point. What? It's not Sebi Savala season? No, it's not. And, and, and actually, he's on a split with Reese McGuire. So just as long as Reese McGuire stays away from parking lots by himself, 
I, mean, I had to explain that to my friend last night. Hey, so what's up with this Reese McGuire guy? Why is everybody making fun of him? And in front of all these children, I had to put it in a nice G-rated way as to why he got in trouble. And, I, and He pitches himself into his hand and then he catches up. Yeah. <laughs> he, he catches his own pitches. He catches his own pitches because he lacks bitches. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you're still counting on Gavin Sheets, and I don't know. It's just a mess. It's a bad team. I mean, it's it should be a good team on paper, but it, it, it's the things that I talked about for years with this team. Yeah, lack talk- of, Sorry. Well, I was just going to point out that the lack of positional versatility on this team is finally biting them on the ass because everybody is here to play that one position. When we've seen the good teams, you just guys talk about all the good teams in the American League East, right? A lot of those guys, they get moved around. They're flexible. Uh, you know, Aaron Judge can play center field. If the Yankees need him to play center field, he can play left field. If the Yankees need him to play left field. Uh, but, yeah, uh, DJ LeMahieu can be put everywhere on the infield. Glebe Torres can be put anywhere on the infield. White Sox don't have that. Tim Anderson has to play shortstop because he's the shortstop. The closer is the closer because he's the closer. It's that old adage. And I think it's finally biting them in the ass right now. So uh, that's also a part of the reason why they're so bad. Uh, the starting pitching. Well, when Lucas Giolito is not the best starting pitcher on this team and it's Dylan Cease who still can't command the ball, right? You're in big, big, big trouble. You're counting on Johnny Cueto, who's like, what, 36 years old to kind of uh, solidify that rotation, which is a nice story, but that ain't the, the long-term answer. And we're still wondering what Lance Lynn is this year. Is he 35 years old or can he continue to do uh, the thing that he's been doing, which is just count on fastballs, fastballs, and fastballs. And then Michael Kopech, this is unknown, this is unknown uncharted territory for the kid, right? This is his first real season. And he's being counted to keep that team afloat. And it's just not fair to count on a 26-year-old who has never pitched a full season of Major League Baseball before. Anyway, I'm sorry, Austin. I was interrupting you. What was your question or what was the uh, their statement that you were going to make? No, right I now? was basically going to say what you said. It was, you know, it's what we talked about at the beginning of the year. You and I have both said it on on both my po- uh, on both this podcast and the Round Trippers podcast. The White Sox have no depth. You yeah. know, once once one goes down, that's it. You, you're it's a huge hole. Lori Garcia and, time, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Lori Garcia, no lead off hitter. <laughs> and I mean, we've seen, we've seen it. I mean, uh, you've had a number of injuries this year and because you've had a number of injuries this year, I mean, they, they're relying on people like Jake Berger to hit in the middle of the lineup. So, I mean, they're, it's just, it's not a good roster construction. Um, they strike out too much. They are too aggressive. You don't have any, you know, you don't have a central, main there and the other thing is like the even the angels have mike trout shohei otani those are the central guys that they rely on the white Sox don't really have anybody like that i mean maybe tim anderson yeah, i was gonna say tim anderson and jose abreu yeah i'm like what and is it the tim anderson is it supposed to be jose abreu because jose abreu is more, he seems to be more of the i'm just gonna go out and do my thing type of guy um and you know there isn't a clear leader of that team it seems like and some and some of these other teams you have there's a clear defined leader and the white Sox just seem like they're there um so yeah. you know it's just terribly constructed team i don't feel like they're a complete team um i really at this point with seeing the way that they played i know i had them winning the division but i don't even see them making the playoffs this year and if they're not careful the tigers made very you know, the, the Tigers could very well pass them. They, they could get in a good, a good groove there and pass the White Sox. Well, so. not with a negative 88 run differential. Now, <laughs> not like that. <laughs> but uh, really quick, the Joe Kelly thing, yeah, it happened against the Twins. Two-thirds of an inning. Gave up three on runs, four runs total, two walks, one strikeout. Um, and then the he next game. He did something like, to the crowd? I forgot. And then the Tigers the next day, he uh, gave up another earned run, one walk. He's not been the guy. He's just been very inconsistent. <laughs> Um, but no, that was supposed to be our strong suit was the bullpen and the bullpen's also been letting this team down. So the bullpen, if the strongest uh, part of your team is letting you down, then you're in trouble. And again, you can say the injuries, 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 injuries. Twins have been injured all year long and they're in the, they're in the division uh, lead right now. We talk about all the time, the three guys that I love on that starting rotation from the twins that I made sure to get on all my fantasy teams, Sonny Gray, Joe Ryan, Bailey over. They've been hurt for a majority of the season. Yep. That's not stopping the Twins. If that would have happened to the White Sox, White Sox would have shit the bed along. They would be in Royals territory at this point if they suffer what the Twins suffer this year. And why are the Twins better off for it than, than the White Sox? Because the Twins have depth 
on their major league roster and on their farm system, something the White Sox cannot brag about at this point. And that is really the difference between being in first and second in this division. And not just that, but the White Sox this past offseason, I've said it before, nobody cares what I have to say. I know White Sox fans are in their own little bubble. And I'm, yeah, I'm calling them out because they used to call me out all the time. They, instead of going for the, for the jugular and competing in the offseason with the Yankees, the Astros, and all the winning teams, the, the, the Rays, the Blue Jays, they just said, you know what? The Twins aren't that good. The Guardians aren't that good. And the Tigers are not that good. We're better than all those teams. We're just going to play down to our – we're going to play down to our, co- our competition's level. And these are the results. You played yourselves because you guys were too – and you could say, well, there's seventh in payroll. It's not enough. We look at the roster. There's holes everywhere that need to be plugged up, and they didn't do it, and now they're paying the price for it. So, anyway, let's talk about a real good team, the Twins, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> so uh so really quick the twins they're in the lead they're in the division lead for about how many games now well, up, 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 i lost um, it um they are up by three and a half over the guardians three and a half over the guardians yeah then now the guardians have bypassed the white Sox. I and mean, come on the guardians were supposed to give up on this season right guardians were supposed to get rid of all the good players jose ramirez was supposed to be traded a long time ago well he got to stay now they're talking about shane bieber getting traded and what happens when he takes a team friendly deal for long term as well? So uh, it, it's just inexcusable. The, the 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 Guardians on paper should not be, be it should not be better than the White Sox, right? Felipe, quiz quiz. What two starting pitchers have the most starts for the Twins? <laughs> what Chris Archer and uh, uh, Dylan Bundy? Yep, Chris Archer three point oh eight ERA and fifteen starts. Dylan Bundy with 14 starts, four and a half ERA. They both have an identical 17.9 K percentage, which is pretty yuck. But hey, they're making starts. Chris Archer with those 15 starts and three ERA has only been worth 0.1 war due to a 4.8 FIP and a 4.98 X FIP. But hey, he's keeping the runs off the board. Only a 224 BAB up against him. Well, guess what? Joe Ryan and Sonny Gray are back from the DL. So that means Chris Archer, Chris Archer can be placed on a 15 day, on a 15 day <laughs> IL now. So that, that happened on July 5th. I just realized that. Oh, he, he is on the IL. Yeah. As of July oh. 5th. So there we go. Uh, they're counting on guys like Devin Smeltzer and not to be confused with Dave Meltzer, the wrestling uh, journalist and Josh Winder, who uh, those guys do not strike out uh, a guy printing, but it works for them. It's working yeah. for them. The twins have shown an ability to do enough with their st- starting pitching development to get them major league ready. Whereas the white Sox, I mean, the white Sox have, you, you guys saw, you, I just need the roster. White Sox have a much more electrifying, much more talented rotation and they're getting their ass swept by the, by the twins. So anyway, uh, twins lineup. I kept telling white Sox fans, the twins lineup is pretty darn good. If they can kind of bounce back and they are, looks like it. The Carlos Correa acquisition with a slash line of 283, 354, and 459 is paying dividends even for one season, even if he gets hurt, even if he has the back problems. It's okay. You know why? Because the Twins have depth. They can re- they easily were re- able to replace him. There's no Louis Garcia on this team. I can tell you that much. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Guardians, we talked about that all the time. The Guardians, uh, they're a pitching factory, although that doesn't look at, like it this year. But they're, they too are just finding ways to win with the ragtag team. I mean, Rosario is now relevant again. Yeah. For the first time since he was a Mets prospect, Steve Kwan, it looks like he's batting leadoff now. Yep. Getting on base, not much of else. And then Jose Ramirez should be an MVP candidate. Uh, what else do you guys, uh, Austin, I haven't heard from you in a while. Austin, what else can you say about the Guardians uh, that I haven't mentioned already? Uh, the Cleveland Guardians, I mean, it, it, it is so funny to see because despite having a below league average offense, they, I mean, it's it's it seems to be their pitching that's carrying them, um, which... I think we could see coming because like you said, they're a pitching factory. Um, But even then in terms of war, Cleveland is the 11th best pitching staff in terms of, in terms of war. Uh, When you look at uh, let's look at ERA minus, when you look at ERA minus and you sort it by that Cleveland is fifth, they're at one (laughs) Oh four. So even then, even, even though they're an above average, they're just above average They're one Oh four, but yet they're right in the mix when it comes to the division. So is that a product of Cleveland is, you know, they thought they, they would give up and then they got some pieces and then went, Oh, let's not give up. Or is this just a product of the AL central being this bad? It's, the, it's a little bit of both. Yeah. And, and I think they're kind of, they were always going to be more than the sum of their parts. Uh, because, I mean, Jose Ramirez was always their best player, even when Francisco Lindor was there. He is still there. He committed to the team. 
And I, I think their ownership, you know, when they extended Ramirez, they gave Miles Straw, you know, a like five year deal that kind of bought him out in a couple of years of free agency. I think that was more of like a, a, a sign of good faith that, hey, even though we've lost some guys, you know, we we traded Francisco Lindor. We still believe we can win partially because of how weak the division is and partially, you know, the pieces they got back in that Lindor trade. Uh, Both Andres Jimenez, who's really should be starting at shortstop for him. He's just been great defensively. But both Jimenez and Rosario are having very, very good years. Jimenez more so, even more so than Rosario, really showing power. He already has nine home runs. Uh, Josh Naylor, you know, has had issues staying on the field. But they just called up Nolan Jones, one of their top prospects. I I think they can kind of smell the blood in the water. And I, I think they're a team that down the stretch, they might call up some of their, you know, top prospects, you know, like they've already done with Nolan Jones and really try and win that division. Cause I think that division is just so up for grabs. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's a combination of either the guardians or the twins and the whites. I mean, I'm looking at their, at their rotation as well. This rotation should not be better than the white Sox rotation. Even FIP, the FIP Phil independent pitching, which is more a, uh, at this point, it's more of an indicator as to how dominant your pitching staff can be or not. Cleveland's 22nd. So they're doing it, you know, with a lot of uh, craftiness. And you look at that rotation, and it makes sense, right? You got Cal Contrell, Zach Plesa. Those guys aren't going to strike out as many guys uh, as uh, as a Shane Bieber. Uh, Aaron Savali is still up there for some reason with his <laughs> 628 ERA. But they're going to throw him out there. Why? Because he eats up innings, I guess. I don't know. But that's how they're doing it. They're, they're doing it more, more with craft. It's a low cost of, I mean, it's kind of what the twins are doing. All these twins, the Orioles, the, the Guardians, they're doing it with low cost starting pitchers who are not going to have the greatest of stuff, but they're going to have all the craft where they're going to keep the uh, hitters off balance. They're not going to give up a lot of walks. They're not going to give to yield a lot of strikeouts either, but they're going to be finding ways to eat up innings and keep hitters off balance, I guess. I mean, let's see. What's up? Go ahead. Oh, me? Yeah, I thought you were going to say something. Oh, oh I, I, I was just looking at, you know, like you mentioned that what is Savali still doing there? And you look at their triple A, they already they have Pey- Peyton Battenfield, who they got hey. from the Rays system in that trade that we talked about last year, as well as the good Logan Allen um, <laughs> that is in the Cleveland system, uh, recently promoted to triple A. And these are guys that, you know, could overtake and or really, you know, be the the trade deadline acquisitions, quote unquote, to reinforce that team. Cause we know pitching is their strong suit. It's always been their strong suit. It's just, how are these guys, how are, how are they going to utilize them? Are they going to bring them up and put them in the pen? Like, you know, the Brewers or the Cardinals, or will they go straight into the rotation? But those guys are already in triple a, so they're not that far off and could legitimately help the team uh, next year or th- actually hey. this year, this year. Well, with the White Sox, Blake Rutherford's in triple A. So watch out. <laughs> Watch out for that. Yeah. No, nah, man. Watch out for the White Sox. They, they, they're going to bring uh, Davis Martin, who nobody knows who that guy is. 25 years old prospect already. So that, that's it. And I'm just pointing out the difference between the Twins and the, and the Guardians, who have guys on the pipeline who can help and step up and, and go for that uh, stretch run. But uh, so far, that's uh, been the case uh, with the AL Central. It's been a three-team race, it seems like, with the Twins, the Guardians, and to a lo- lesser extent, the uh, – the White Sox. Uh, I picked the Guardians to be fourth. Tigers in third because of all the things that they did and all the prospects that are coming up. That has not worked out for the Tigers. And a lot of you guys picked the Royals to be last. You, Sean, picked the Guardians to be last, and so did Henry. Yeah, and I remember when we were doing the show or, like, talking about filling out the – I really struggled because I was either yeah. Guardians were going to be in the playoffs or they're going to be in last place. Mm-hmm. And it was at that at the time we did this, they had not extended Jose Ramirez. They had not extended, you know, Miles Straw and Stephen Kwan. I wasn't really sure if he was going to play. And I I thought they were going to be a team that by this time they would have traded everybody. Same, same. And and it, it, it was one of those. If they kept everyone, I thought they could make it to the playoffs. I did not think they were actually going to keep everyone. So that was that was kind of like a pleasant surprise of when they did extend Ramirez, they did extend straw, you know, they didn't just throw in the cards. They pr- promoted the guys from the beginning, like Stephen Kwan. 
Uh, so pleasant surprise. I'm glad to be wrong about the Guardians. Well, the Tigers did call out their big name prospects. Unfortunately, it has not worked out too well for them. Uh, Riley Green has a 341 on base percentage, but struggling everywhere else. Uh, who's the other guy? Spencer Torkelson with a 289 on base percentage. That's not working. Yeah, uh, he's uh, almost negative one more. Oh, he he's on that Lurie Garcia track. <laughs> Uh, Javier Baez has been a bust. Uh, Robbie Grossman has been a bust. All the guys that they that we thought, wow, Tigers are making moves. They're gonna blow up this year. Are we it's, really surprised that Javier Baez is a bust, though? Not this bad. I mean, we thought he was gonna be bad, but we not this. I, I didn't think it was gonna be this bad. You know, uh, when, I mean, when how, you put him in more of a pitcher's park, yeah, and- that, that that I've, I've said multiple times that uh, that team in that park was literally the worst place he could have gone. Yeah, <laughs> the worst. I, I, I was I, uh, thinking that there was going to be more doubles and triples in his future that would kind of make up for the fact that he's no, not getting the home run power. That's not how he plays. He swings out of his ass trying to hit the ball <laughs> as far as he can, and he yeah. can't. He can't. I mean, he swings at the pitch when it's halfway. It's halfway <laughs> to home plate. Yeah, like, he would have uh, worked well with the White Sox because that's what the White Sox do anyway. <laughs> Except that they actually make enough contact to me to matter. Um, but no, but not just him, but Heimer Candelario. I thought this was going to be his breakout yep. year because he had a pretty good season last year, and yeah, that's I not been the too. case. And of the three guys, uh, Matt Manning, Casey Mize, and Tariq Skubal. Skubal's been the only one who's been turned into something, yeah. Yeah, and the bullpen sucks. We move on to well, the, 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 the bullpen. I actually I like their bullpen. Oh, it's I, I mean, I think they're all trade bait, but the one thing I want to mention before we go to the Royals uh that the guy leading their offense in war is jonathan scope at 1.3 that's a problem he he has a 57 wrc plus and is leading the team in war yeah you talk about javier bias being bad that that's 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 yeah but but bias is at 71 wrc plus so you know (laughs) I, i find it so funny that 57 and he's leading the team in war it's it's um it's a problem. It's a problem <laughs> for the Tigers. And I, I stand correct. I guess that I, I guess at this point, I guess I would pick the Tigers bullpen over the Orioles bullpen. I don't know. Oh, my God. <laughs> Let's see, because I see a lot of guys who have more strikeouts than innings. So where does that put them <laughs> in terms of uh, K per nine? Because what I say, the 26 for the Orioles, right? I mean, Joe Jimenez is a thing again. I, I cannot believe that. I thir- thir- 33 K percent um and a three year right boom all right so baltimore's 26 and k per nine the tigers are 17 so well last i checked 17th is better than being in 26 <laughs> so michael jordan rules michael all right jordan. royals with cheeses royals with cheeses and uh yeah we talk about the royals all the time that they have all these pitching prospects they were all they they uh they they spent a lot of draft capital on these guys and um it's not working out uh, as as planned, right? Uh, so, and we talk about those guys. We don't need to talk about those guys anymore. But their hitting lineup looks kind of intriguing, but it's also full of disappointments. Uh, Bobby Witt Jr. has uh, had a rude awakening this year. MJ Melendez, after getting off to a good start, he's gone down to earth, despite the fact that he's been getting a lot more playing time at catching. Uh, Vinny Pasquantino is up. Yeah. That's a good thing. I, I, I think with Bobby Witt, like I was always kind of the lower guy on him. But he's not struggling like as much as I thought he would. I mean, like the 239, 288, 443, that's not great by any means. He's a barely above Lee average hitter. But it's like the fact that he's healthy, he's getting these at bats and plate appearances. He's playing basically every day. I, like, I feel like it's a good thing for him. Like, you could have far worse rookie seasons, see Spencer Porkelson. Uh, but it's like, I don't know. They're, they're an interesting team. Uh, kind of i feel like they're a little bit halfway and salvador perez is a negative value war player yeah uh people were telling me that salvador perez is a really good catcher because he can throw people out we talked about that he's not there's more to catching than just throwing runners out especially in a league that doesn't run too much anymore so nope. anyway i digress we move on to the net uh where are we american league west it's the astros and everyone else we talked about the angels already uh mariners were henry's pick to win uh, I think a lot of us, I mean, I picked the Mariners to make the playoffs. Austin picked the Mariners to put, make the playoffs. And they're currently, where are they currently? They are in, a sec- oh, they're now in second place. But There's they're about. Second, they're just not making the playoffs. 
Yeah, well, never say never, my friend. Never say never, because the Orioles now now people are loving the Orioles to make the oh playoffs this year. So if that if that can happen, then anything is possible. Mariners are twelve games behind the Astros, and I guess that would put on what maybe three games, right? Three games behind the the Red Sox, I think. Right? Am I doing the, the right Rays, here? I- uh, they are right now one game behind the Blue Jays in the wild card. Anything is possible, Kevin Garnett told me. Yep. Anything is possible. But we like we like the Mariners for for uh, reasons. Austin, you're in the out there on the West Coast. Uh, what made you? I mean, do you think that your prediction of them making the playoffs? Uh, well, you just said they're not making the playoffs. Why do you believe that? Well, I said I, I meant like right now they're not making they're not in the playoffs right oh, now. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Um, I and I it's going to be really hard for them to make the playoffs because the the AL East is just so good. The mm-hmm. AL East is just way too good. Um, I think. Seattle's best bet because on the outside looking in, you have Seattle who are one who's who's one game behind. Then you have Cleveland who's two games behind. Then you have hey, you have Baltimore. Baltimore's three games out <laughs> the wild card. Uh, uh, and then uh, White Sox are three and a half. You have Texas at four. Um, those are really right now the outside looking in because after that you have the Angels at seven games out. Um, so out of those, I would I would pick Seattle to probably have the better to probably have the best team out of that and, you know, have the best chance of getting on a good run. I mean, they're on a seven game winning streak right now. So, you know, I, they can't do it. They even have a better run differential than Toronto does right now. So (laughs) I think their best bet is either Boston or Toronto fall uh, falls off the cliff and they sneak in with Tampa Bay and one other AL East team. Mm. Um, other than that, it's going to be really difficult for Seattle to make the playoffs this year because, like I said, the AL East is just the AL East is too good. But you're seeing good seasons from JP Crawford. Um, you're seeing a good season from um, Ty France. Ty Julio France. Rodriguez. Uh, Julio Rodriguez. Julio Rodriguez. Rodriguez. The year. Yeah. So, I mean, you're seeing good offensive seasons. Um, in terms of their pitching, I'm not. I'm not super stoked on their pitching, but you know, they're, they're pitching. Let's see where, where are they in terms of pitching? Uh, they're at a 97 ERA minus. So they're below league average. They have a, uh, three, three, five, six ERA as a team, 4.09 FIP as a team. I mean, it's just, they're, they're, they're striking out at 22% of the time. Their walk percentage is at 7.7%, which is, you know, pretty low, but they don't have, excuse me, they don't have the guy they had Robbie, you know, they, they picked up Robbie Ray thinking he was going to be the guy and he's not the guy this year. So, you know, you're missing, I think a couple starters. So, I mean, Jerry DePoto, he likes to trade. So maybe they go out and try and trade for another starter. I don't know. But- yeah. My, my worry with them is if they do what they did last year, they were in a position to win last year and they still sold off pieces. Granted, I like the trades, um, but if they do that again this year, I think the AL East has just too much ammo for them to overtake a team while also trading. Because I could see them trading somebody like, you know, uh, Ahuenio Suarez or even, you know, Ty France. I, I don't think they would, but I mean, definitely could see a Suarez trade. Dylan Moore, something like that. And if they do that, I think they just don't have the depth to stay competitive. Right. Uh, yeah. Really quick, Mariners are in eighth place in WRC+, Plus, team WRC+. Plus. Uh, I mean, it's a really good team. I don't know why it's not translating, but sixth place in ERA, the starting pitchers ERA, and in K per nine, fourth place in K per nine among their bullpen. In but you guys of, are gonna you guys are gonna tell me that the Orioles are better though, huh? Right? That's, that's what the <laughs> in terms in terms of war, in terms of pitching war, there Seattle's best pitcher right now is Logan Gilbert at one point seven. Yeah. He's 16th. And then you don't see another excuse me, you don't see another Mariner until you get to Robbie Ray, who's at twenty seventh at one point four. You're not you're not going to get into a playoffs with a pitching rotation with this kind of production. No, it's still um, early. I mean, Robbie Ray has been yeah, pitching I, I, very well lately. As and, well, so. and Gilbert and Kirby are young, st- yeah. but they also have tremendous upside. And the bullpen um, and, and the, yeah, the, the, the bull, yeah, the bullpen's nasty with Munoz, Seawald, 
Uh, granted, once again, they traded Graveman when he was great out of their bullpen last year. I could see them trading somebody like Paul Seawalt or Diego Castillo. Ken Giles is back. But yeah, it's really kind of a up in the air thing for them. Right. Which kind of oh, goes he's back on the DL on the IL, by the way. Ken Giles is. Oh, they put him back on the oh. shoulder discomfort as of July 8th. Uh, Go ahead, Austin. Um, which kind of goes back to what I was saying. Out of those teams that are on the outside looking in, Seattle has the best chance because they have the highest upside. I think Seattle has the best chance to go on a really good swing and you know squeak their way into the playoffs, given you know, Toronto or Boston or even Tampa goes on a slide. And, you know, so they're close enough that they can they can take a they can take a wild card spot. Uh, the Astros, by the way, uh, we're running, uh, I mean, well over at this point. We haven't even gone to the National League teams yet. So I put it up on the chat. Uh, if we wrap things up with the American League right now and then come back in a few minutes. Uh, right. and, and, and re-record for the National League stuff. I mean, uh, Sean, Austin, are you guys OK with that? Okay. Um, and, and then since it's two episodes, we could skip next week, I guess, at this point. Is that something you guys want to do, or do you guys want to just put it all in one episode? Maybe we can do National League next week. No, nah, by that time, oh. it's going to be too late. Oh. I mean, it's the All Star break. I mean, when is the uh, All Star break? Uh, July 18th. It's next Tuesday, I believe. It's uh, next week already. Let's just, let's just do the episodes today. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh let's see there so what, what astros you know the thing just the interesting thing about the astros is that they actually have a higher win uh, world series championship uh percentage than the yankees astros are at 14.7 to win the world series over at fan graphs and yankees are at 13.9 percent the fact despite the fact that the yankees have a better record uh they've had a a, a pretty exciting series uh two series right they already played twice against each other correct yeah 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 and it's been pretty exciting. It's been pretty electric. And that looks like it's going to be the uh, ALCS, um, unless something stupid happens. <laughs> but that looks like to be the ALCS matchup at the end of the year. Um, and Astros seemingly are doing this with a with a thinner roster. But all they do is win. One man goes down, <laughs> and they win, and they bring in some other guy, and they win. Oh, Carlos Correa is gone. Okay, we got Jeremy Pena, who's a rookie of the year candidate. So, uh, uh, Sean, what can you tell me about the Astros that we ha- we don't know about? Uh, about them as of right now I, I mean that Jordan Alvarez is probably one of the best hitters in baseball Justin Verlander is a robot and Christian Javier who we've been talking about for years now is awesome I mean that's the Astros in three sentences you know what I like about Jordan Alvarez is that he can play left field and he won't get hurt But if you're on the white like, side, like, like Eloy who? Jimenez. Oh, Eloy Jimenez. I was going to say, I was waiting for the other shoe to drop there. Yeah. Well, you thought it was going to be an Orioles joke again? Uh, yeah, I thought it was going to be an Orioles. Well, Anthony Santander is better than Jordan Alvarez because he plays on the uh, Orioles. Yeah. That's what somebody – I'm just saying, in our in our fantasy league, that's what somebody was trying to tell me, that Anthony Santander was better than Aaron Judge. So, in, in so many ways, he was trying to tell me that. I'm not going to mention names. <laughs> It's just but that's kind of a hedonistic, huh? Hedonistic uh, outlook on life there. Uh, Alex Bregman bouncing back little by little, right? Yeah, I mean he he's a player. I mean I, I don't think we'll ever see the forty home run season, but I still think he's a, a well above average oh, hitter. Oh, there's no way he hits forty yeah. home runs unless he knows what pitch is coming. <laughs> and of course, Kyle Tucker. I mean, this is a. This, I mean, we, we spend so much time on, on on really awful teams, but this is a team that we should be really looking at and. Where because of time constraints, the thing I don't like about them uh, is that they still are insisting on a six man rotation, but obviously that's doing wonders for guys like Justin Verlander and yeah. some of these other guys who are not used to pitching, like who were uh, starting out as relievers, not like Christian Javier, uh, maybe stretch them out a little bit, but that, that's, that's a really good team. Yeah, I, I love and, and, about this. and they're, and they're still in a position where I think they can, they're going to add at the deadline yeah. and get even better. Um, I could see them in play for Wilson Contreras. I could see them in play for, one of the red starting pitchers. And if that happens, then I, I think they're my favorites. Then. Yeah. And uh, they, they always find guys out of their minor league system to just go in and plug in and do wonders. We talked about the angels already. Do we need to keep talking about the angels? I mean, how disappointing they are. The angels uh, are just a dumpster fire. They're just, <laughs> they are not great right now, but I will say, let I want to point out in the top 30, 
of uh in the top 30 in terms of fan graphs war there are five astros in the top 30 you have jordan alvarez jose altuve kyle tucker jeremy pena and alex bregman so you know out of, out of those i was i was like jeremy pena and i started looking at it i'm like wow 270 average 320 obp 472 slugging good for a mm. 2.6 war 127 weighted runs created plus it doesn't seem like they're really he's got 12 home runs he stole six bases 31 rbis it doesn't seem like right now houston is missing correa much uh, because <laughs> no, they knew it, they knew what they had yeah th- this this was why this is probably why they gave him that low ball team friendly offer they're like yeah you can come if you want but we got this we got this pena kid coming up and he's pretty good too so if you don't want to play for us that's fine So, you know, and the thing is, he's done this in 63 games, which is 20 games less than Aaron Judge, Rafael Devers, Jose Ramirez, people of that nature. So it's just he's had really good production in, you know, in his first full season as the shortstop for the for the Houston Astros. So just wanted to give a highlight there to Jeremy Payne. Yeah, I mean. He's right there in the rookie of the year race with Julio Rodriguez. It's been a fun uh, race so far between those two. It's been fun watching them develop uh, really quick. Uh, on, just like the Astros, the Angels also have a six man rotation, except that the Angels six man rotation is not very good. <laughs> <laughs> Outside of Shohei Otani, of course. Um, oh, but you told me he was bad. I'm not saying he's bad. It's just he doesn't qualify for anything at this moment. He never qualifies for anything. Anyway, and, and in terms of starting pitching, that's. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know, man. I, I, so someone asked Vince because Vince is, is really. He likes to uh, bring that up every single week, it seems like, or every single day, it seems like. If you're the Angels, what can you do to make this better? And I just look at this roster. I'm looking at it right now. I look at this roster, and there is so much garbage here. It's going to take maybe six landfills to dump it all out. (laughs) And all you're doing is just wasting Mike Trout and Shoyo Tani's prime years. Yep. This is – you know know what it is, Sean? I think we talked about this a long, long time ago. Just like it takes – a while for some of these rebuilding teams to get good, right? Maybe three years. I mean, now we're celebrating the Orioles for because their their thirty years are finally playing up to speed. But it also takes a while for a rebuild to get going, right? It takes just like it takes you know trades and waiver wire pickups over the years to get your team to be up to speed in World Series contenders. I have a theory that it takes just as long to really strip a team and go on a full rebuild, right? The Pirates make it look easy. The Marlins make it look easy, right? But they're used to it. But if you're the Angels who have been trying to compete and at least get third place on that AL West division, you're going to need years and years of transactions to get to the Pirates level and to be really bad, uh, right? I mean, or is that... Well, the, I, I think, think the thing with them is it's like the their pitching, you know, on paper isn't like terrible. Like you look yeah. at the names like Otani, Detmers, top prospect, Patrick Sandoval, top prospect, Syndergaard is bouncing back. Um, but just everywhere, all you know, Canning's injured. It's it's just so many injuries. Uh, Anthony Rendon is out. David Fletcher has been out. And then you have guys like uh, Michael Stefanik, uh, <laughs> Jonathan VR. They picked up off of waivers from the Cubs. <laughs> You, you know you're in a bad bad shape when you're picking up players that the Cubs let go. and it, But it's like you look at them and it's like, especially with the lineup, Taylor Ward, Mike Trout, Otani, Walsh. That's a competitive one through four top of the lineup. And then it's just the rest of it's garbage. I mean, it, it, it's garbage. And the rotation really could be better. It's just they, they're kind of like the White Sox of the West. Yeah, and, no, and like, I was just thinking and, that. In the back that. end of the bullpen, Rysel Iglesias is having, you know, just had a big blow up, blown save. But Ryan Tapera, Aaron Luke, these were guys that were great last year. Mm-hmm. And once again, once you get past a few of those guys, Archie Bradley, Archie Bradley's hurt. And then you get into more, you know, quad A type relievers. And it's just the lack of depth. And they haven't really seen like they're going to go out there and like actually fix it. Yeah, so it's kind of disappointing. And you mentioned the White Sox, right? I mean, this is another team that's failed to develop their farm system properly, both yeah. pitching and hitting. Uh, despite the fact that there's a lot of homegrown players on this team, it's still it's not enough. I mean, you you, you just mentioned Brandon Marsh being garbage. Brandon Marsh was everybody's darling at the beginning of the season, 
So, and it's not working. So anyway, uh, Rangers, <laughs> the Rangers, uh, all of us, we picked them to be in, well, most of us picked them to be in third, uh, fourth place, I should say. Uh, Henry loved them so much. He picked them to be in third over here. But uh, I don't know, man, the Rangers, ah, the Rangers, where are they? They're in fourth place, just like we all predict. Most of us predicted. Uh, they have a positive 13 run differential. Half a, half a billion dollars for Seeger and Simeon is not looking very good right now. Yeah, especially if, uh, for well, Marcus we, Simeon. And we, we knew that. Uh, yeah, I knew the, the yeah. Simeon thing was just, oh, it, it was, oh, uh, God, why didn't people listen? Uh, and and, we're, and uh, uh, who did we talk? Was, was it you, Austin, that we mentioned this, uh, where we talked about, the, hey, uh, the Rangers, they don't play in a hitter-friendly ballpark anymore. That's a... No. Pretty pitcher-friendly, dominant ballpark right there. Yeah, it was on your yeah. podcast, wasn't it? Yes, it was. It was last week. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Jesus. It's been a while. Uh, but no, it's um, that's another decent-looking lineup, right? I mean, that's they have some big names. Nate Lowe is finally playing up to some of his yeah. potential despite the very slow start. Uh, and then they're just not playing up to speed. Hey, Leo it's- Tavares is up now. We're waiting on him yeah, for a while. yeah, and he's well. The the interesting thing with that lineup right now is they're kind of in a weird spot where Jonah Heim, you know, the catcher, he's one of their best players right now, yeah. and he's he's having to play a lot of catcher because Mitch Garver, who was brought in to play a lot of catcher, can't play catcher because he has you know a messed up elbow kind of, and they're in the same situation that the Phillies were in with Harper before he you know broke his the bone in his hand or whatever and that Garver's kind of forced to be DH only because he can't play catcher when that wasn't really the plan but they've called up a couple of interesting younger players you mentioned Leo Tavares Josh H. Smith uh, Sam Huff uh, big time power had a little bit of run earlier in the year Um, it's just I don't know I I feel like they spent Seager you know is having a down season but two and a half four through half the season, 18 home runs, uh, career low BABIP right now. So I, I think he's set to improve. Simeon, not sold on at all. Uh, the Right now, it's their pitching. They got to figure out something with their pitching. Well, John Gray, Martin Perez are the good so far this season. Dane Dunning. So, so. Right. So, so. Uh, Spencer Howard, we still don't know what he is. Glenn Otto, who is a player that we both, all of us like here on this podcast. He's not live up to speed. No. And then the bullpen. I, the, the back end of their bullpen's actually been really good with like Matt or yeah, Matt Moore, Brock yeah, Burke. Moore. They've been really good. And I think that that is going to be their best chance. They just need to fold this year, trade those bullpen pieces for whatever you can get. Yeah. And then come back next year. Like if you can get a couple of like double A, triple A starters that you, your player development guys feel like they can identify and do something with, kind of like how they did with the, the Gallo trade, obviously random relief pitchers aren't going to give you the same return as Joey Gallo did, but you can, you know, identify some pieces and get back pieces for those relief pitchers. And then we finish up with the A's. Everybody picked them to be in last place. Uh, it, it is, I mean, you talk about no names, a bunch of nobodies. Christian Bentho, uh, Christian Bethacourt was just traded to the race and he was like their best player this year. <laughs> They're the same former catcher turned pitcher back to catcher. Yeah. Christian Braves, yeah. Yep. yeah, they so they got rid of uh one former Braves prospect because they have a catching prospect uh from the Braves as well, Shay Lang yeah. and Triple <laughs> Uh but I mean again, we go back to what Austin and I were doing in the offseason was we looked at all the teams, we tried to identify which of these teams would be um which of these players, I should say, which of these players would be making an impact, not just for their team, but also for fantasy leagues as well. And you look at their roster right now. And just when you thought that the names couldn't get more obscure, they actually get more obscure as the season goes on. Uh, Sky Bolt is on the team. That's probably the best name uh, on this team, just on name alone. Yeah. Sky Bolt. Yeah. Hitting he, 091. He's, yeah, he's been up and down on their roster for a couple of years now. Yeah, it seems um, like it. Chad seems- Pender's been a huge disappointment. I was really high on him going into the year. Uh, Christian but, Pache is nowhere to be found. Is he hurt neg- already? Negative. No, he just got demoted. He was that bad. Negative one point one war. Remember when um, the, everybody was bitching them out for trading four prospects to the uh, uh, what was for for trading? He, he's, the, Victor, the he's Victor Robles light. I mean, he's Robles light. He can't hit. No, that, that's the Braves though. The Braves yeah. were getting uh, criticized for trading away four prospects for Matt Olson. It turns out that was a move to make. They, they didn't really give up anyone. 
uh, in, in uh, value, I should say. Maybe Shane Langleyers can be someone, but the other two guys uh, in that trade are are just low level prospects and really shouldn't matter much. No. It'll uh, be interesting no. to see who they trade at the deadline. I, I think everyone's talked about Frankie Montas a bunch, but there hasn't been as much noise around Sean Murphy or Ramon Laureano. If I was them, I would have traded Murphy with Olsen to get back like an Uber package from the Yankees or whoever it was Oof. that were rumored in it. Man, the but, Yankees don't trade away their prospects. You know that. <laughs> they like yeah, to they, those they, prospects like they just buy the bad contracts and make it look like a trade. <laughs> what? Uh, oh. The Giancarlo Stanton trade. Oh, right, right, right. It's like it, it, it was a trade, but it was really I'm just buying this player. Uh, just give me back some garbage and make it look like it was a trade. Uh, Austin, can you identify a team willing to give up some prime prospects to the Oakland Athletics for Frankie Montez? And we'll finish with that. I, I don't think Montas is – I don't think he has a pedigree to make it worth prime prospect. Oh, no, no. He's really good. I, I, I think that even they could do it with Montas and Murphy. And I, I know the Mets have been tied to Frankie Montas. Um, so, it, I, I don't know. It'll be interesting. I mean, 100 strikeouts and 96 innings pitch. Uh, he was um, – he is in a uh, – I didn't mention his name in the Cy Young Award uh, category, but – He's right there on the uh, on the outside looking in. Top yeah, 10 AL pitcher. Yeah, he did leave his a... last start early, though. Uh, and then oh, he yeah. had to have an MRI on his shoulder. Um, it showed up clean, but, like, his velocity was down, like, two and a half ticks. And so that was kind of like a, a huge red flag moment. But he's obviously their most valuable trade chip right now. Go ahead, Austin. Yeah, I think, yeah, if Montas is their most valuable trade tr- trade chip, you could have Sean Murphy in there as well. But I think another one that they might want to look at trading because he's having such a good season right now is Paul Blackburn. Yeah, that, that's a guy that would you can flip. He's not going to get an elite prospect package, no, but, you're, but you, you would definitely sell. Over. You're going to, yeah, you're going to sell high on what he's done this year. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the bullpen, uh, Lou Trevino has seven saves, but he's just been awful. I don't care what anybody says about him. He's just oh, been he has awful. a six ERA. Hey, a 3.02 fifth, though. So what so, is going on? 472 BABIP. Wow. Yeah. That, that's that's insane. I don't, And that's through 24 innings. It's not yeah. like through four. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, we talked about him already on the uh, on, on Austin's podcast at Nauseam. And, yeah, you're getting saves, but you're getting penalized with a whip. You're getting penalized yeah. in the ERA. Uh, AJ, AJ Puck's been good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, AJ Puck. <laughs> uh, but now that's really not a lot to uh, digest here for the Oakland Athletics. I mean, that's a real rebuilding team, and that's just it's just a mess. That's an ugly team to look at. So. The Angels are a dumpster fire. The A's are just a flat out wildfire. Like, well, uh, apparently, <laughs> 900 acres are burned at this point. Like, it's bad. <laughs> apparently, the Angels, uh, I guess people are suggesting the Angels should be more like the Oakland Athletics in terms of how bad you can be. Because there's Angels bad, and you just mentioned it, Austin. There's Oakland Athletics awfulness going yeah. on here. And uh, that is the American League. Um, you guys okay? We take like a five minute break and yeah sure do the we national do league and Perfect. maybe that gives enough time for this uh episode to be saved on uh sean's computer good yeah yeah, yeah perfect all right well for sean that's austin over there i am felipe we will be back shortly for part two of this uh major league baseball season re- uh, predictions pr- review and just a bit thank you for your patience and we'll see you soon <laughs>